Hey, 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 what is up, everybody? Dr. Duckwell, a world famous bariatric surgeon, author of 13 books. We're going to talk about how sick is President Trump really? And what does mild symptoms mean for the rest of us? When we say mild symptoms, is that something we can like brush off? How cautious do we need to be? How careful do we need to be? All right. So we're, I'm going to break this down for you guys from medical terminology. This is not a political post. Please do not make it political. This is the kind coronavirus community. We've been doing these broadcasts um, since uh, since the spring, quite honestly. And we want to keep it nice and calm. So just tell me where you're watching from. Hello. How are you? The worst health scare of any president since the Ronald Reagan shooting when I was a little kid. That was almost 40 years ago, believe it or not. I just had a birthday. I'm 48 years old. I cannot believe the watch the uh, Ronald Reagan shooting was 40 years ago. I remember I was in second grade. That was pretty crazy. So tag share, hit play, hit record, hit replay, um, hit watch party. I would appreciate. Hello from Iowa. Um, Herbin Washington, what is up? How are you? I am here. K Michelle watching on YouTube. Terry watching on YouTube. Where are you guys watching from? Ann McNitt from Michigan. Kelly Tennessee is in the house. What's up? What's up? Andy from Rhode Island. Stay safe, Andy. Uh, New York, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, about to have their second hot, uh, second wave. They are spiking right now. Mindy catches Northern Illinois, Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, thank you, Denise. I appreciate that. I love you too. Portland, Oregon. Corey, you guys are a hot mess. What the hell are you guys doing up there in Portland? <laughs> hey, Linnea, I know who you are. What's up? Deb Hall, Missouri. Tulsa, Oklahoma, the best tasting water in the country. Yes, I know. I've been there. What's up, Gloria? Looking good there. Um, Tortola BVI, British Virgin, British BVI, Virgin Islands. British Virgin Islands is in the house. What's up, Ebony? How's it going? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Tampa. Look at that. Dorota Lemmings, Wales, UK. See, I told y'all I was internationally famous. <laughs> I love it. Hey, what's up, Leah? Haven't seen you in a long time. We need to get together soon. Uh, give your husband my best, Leah. Uh, Jean, what's up? Hello, hello. South Dakota, Laredo, Texas. What's up? Greetings, greetings. All right. Um, we are going to talk about how sick is Trump really? What does it mean to have mild symptoms? What do you need to know? Take care of yourself. This is the science behind it. New York City. Be careful. Be careful, New York City. You guys are starting up on your second wave, so be careful. Sandra, Ontario, Canada. I have a lot of Canadians who are in my uh, challenge, so I hope you'll check that out. Uh, speaking of which, Granny, Grandpa, I want to tell you a little bit. Commercial break real quick. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. I want to tell you about I open up my weight loss challenge once a month. So if you go to weightlosschallenge.com, you'll hit this page, weightlosschallenge.com. Uh, we open this up once a month. It's uh, October is back to basics. We're going to go back to all the things that made it successful. successful. For less than a dollar a day, you'll get a daily Facebook Live for me, daily accountability partner, access to two secret groups. You got a lot of patient testimonials who are in here. $27 a month, invest in yourself to get all of this. We are eliminating snacking. Every month we do an elimination goal. This month for October, it is no snacking. We also have great exercise, uh, weekend exercise tips from our triple certified trainer who is a vegan. I'm not a vegan. You don't have to be a vegan. But this is a living challenge. It goes as you go. We also have a cook who has helped 300 people learn how to cook. She, uh, we do at least two broadcasts, two cooking demonstrations a month. You get all of that, all of that, a daily Facebook Live, a daily email on what to do, accountability partner, weekend exercises, cooking demonstrations, two groups, for $27 a month. Try it for one month and invest $27 in yourself. Weightlosschallenge.com. Check it out. Weightlosschallenge.com. Thank you guys so much. There's my commercial break right there. Ta-da! I'm back. What is up? Hey, Lee. 
How are you doing? I was director of bariatrics uh, of Loveless in um, Loveless Bariatrics in Albuquerque. All right, New Hampshire's in the house. Got to pay the bills, Gloria. You know how it goes. You know how it is. Bonjour. I have been to Paris several times. I've been to um, uh, Burgundy. I've been to Cannes. I love it. Love France. Love France. Uh, Normandy, it's gonna be awesome. Howdy from Austin. I was just at Perla's last month, a couple weeks ago. I was at Perla's there on South Congress. Paul, love it. If you've never been to Perla's, highly recommend it. Puerto Rico, Edwin, I might be moving to Puerto Rico after all this shit's done. All right, let's talk about them facts. Gloria got it right. Let's talk about them facts. Hey, John Howard, real quick, Los Angeles. Los Angeles, stay safe, man. Stay safe, guys. I know California's in trouble. So my girl Eileen Fry is watching. Thank you. Thank you, Eileen. Um, you know, let me see. Where is it? There you go. Oscar, I feel you. And thank you for trying to stick up for me, Oscar. I appreciate that. People respond how they respond, Oscar. You know, it just goes to show a very troubled mind. They think they are trying to show me up by making ugly comments. They only show how their brain really is, how their brain really is. So here's a good question. Princess J watching on YouTube. If Trump wasn't really sick, why would he go to the hospital? Because he's the president of the United States. He has the best health care in the world. He has access to all of these um, uh, experimental medicines that the average person like you and me do not have access to. Good for him. That's fine. It is good. And, um, but he is, he is the most powerful pain man on the planet. Let's make no doubt about it. Um, but we're going to talk about that. All right. We're going to talk about why that's the case. No ugliness. Come on, James, you're better than that, brother. Let's, let's keep it cool. Let's simmer down. Uh, so that people from like, like Sonia here from down under, realizes we're not just a bunch of gun toting crazies up in here. All right. Yolanda, Orange County, stay, stay safe. Uh, thank you guys for sharing. I appreciate it. Let's get going. Let's get going. Okay. Um, all right. All right. Let's go. So how sick is Trump really? Okay. So if you're new to me, I'm Dr. Duck Vong. I'm a um, bariatric surgeon, retired bariatric surgeon. I retired two years ago. I've written 13 books. I've trained surgeons. I've, uh, I've helped thousands of people. I have a large platform on social media, relatively speaking, you know, for a surgeon anyway. And, um, why am I talking about coronavirus? It's because the number one risk factor, don't forget this, the number one risk factor for poor outcomes from coronavirus, not catching, not catching, Everybody's going to catch coronavirus. If you get exposed to it, you're going to catch it. That's what novel means. Um, but the number one risk factor for poor outcomes from coronavirus is actually morbid obesity. It's not age. It's morbid obesity. We've looked at that. And so as a weight loss surgeon in my bariatric community, that's why I talk about coronavirus. And the people who don't like it, who think I'm being political, you can read between the lines. You can go away. Go away because you are very confused about what this is all about. And probably you are part of the problem. Okay. So I want to give you some real science and real facts. No name calling. That's all I'm going to do for the name calling. See, I didn't even say fuck once. See, you're good. You're good. Right. I'm being better. I'm growing up. I'm, I'm like growing up. I'm being good. So, so let's, let's get really clear. Uh, President Trump is the most powerful man on the planet. And whether you like him or you don't like him, he deserves a certain level of respect. He has um, a lot depends on him, on his health. So, yes, of course, they are going to take all sorts of precautions. Um, and I called it yesterday. If you watched my broadcast yesterday at noon, Central Standard Time, I said they would they would admit him to the hospital uh, for precautionary measures to watch him closer and those are all the words and terms that they used. So then at 4 p.m., it's announced he got helicoptered to Walter Reed Hospital. Um, and it's not a regular hospital. It was formerly a military hospital. It's now a civilian. But trust me, they've got all, all branches of the military there. It's, it's very safe. It's highly guarded. In addition to that, because he's the president, 
he has his pre presidential suite, which is only for the president. So it's seldomly used. And it's not just a room like you and I would have. It's uh, It's got a living area. It's got a dining area. It's got uh, an office space so uh, he can have visitors. And I've never been there, but I surmise that it probably has all of the needed medical equipment. So I'm sure he has the equivalent of a high-tech ICU in there. And if I, if I had to guess, I would say he has a surgical suite in there or if not nearby, so an operating room. I, I'm just guessing, but I it would not, I would not be surprised. I would, it, you know, of course he would, you know? So you're not gonna take the president of the United States through the same hallways on a stretcher to the operating room where normal people, normal people, us, have surgery. He, I'm, I'm almost guaranteed that he has his, everything he needs right there, okay? So uh, he is the most powerful man on the planet. Now, let's talk about what happened yesterday, what happened. So um, October 1st, so Thursday night, um, he he announced that he was he, his aide was uh, had tested positive, so he was waiting on a test um, that was on the news, uh, roughly 10 p.m. Then at around midnight, 1 a.m. Friday morning, 1 a.m. Friday morning, so in the middle of the night, um, he announces that he he and Melania, first lady, tested positive. So um, that was all the talk all of Friday. And I jumped on to kind of give an update about that, what that means. And um, then he's taken to the hospital. So he has spent almost 24 hours now in uh, Walter Reed Hospital, okay? So at that time, uh, we didn't really know his status other than he was told that um, he was uh, doing well, et cetera, et cetera. But then it later came out that he had mild symptoms. So let's talk about Trump's mild symptoms. So number one, Trump's mild symptoms were low grade fever, fatigue, fag. And then later we learned out um, he had hoarseness and, and, um, and a uh, cough. So let's put this up here. This was confirmed by the White House physician. Now, I don't really care how you vote. I, this is not political. I'm not political. I don't care what those dickheads say. They just don't know. I don't lean either way because uh, I know that my life does not improve or get better based on a politician. My life gets better because I take my own destiny in my hands. And that's what I teach my patients. That's what I teach my following, that they are bigger than their obesity. They can conquer their obesity. Um, so I don't really have political leanings. Um, I, I will say there are things that Trump says, which is kind of mind boggling, uh, but that's true with any politician. Um, so I don't want you to think that I'm, anti, I'm not anti-Trump. I'm not pro Biden. On the other hand, I'm not, I'm not pro Trump either. Uh, I just want to explain this from a very calm viewpoint. So anybody who claims that they know my political meanings, you can show yourself like Garth Brooks says to the dough. Whoa, whoa. show yourself to the dough. All right. So Trump's mild symptoms. Um, it came out later that by this, they mean low grade fever, fatigue, hoarseness, and much later, they mentioned he has a cough, okay? Now, what does this mean? You have to frame it. For an average person, you know, I actually had a birthday on Thursday. Thank you, thank you very much. I'm actually 48 years old. I'm 48 years young, damn it. And um, for people who are young and healthy, a low-grade fever wouldn't mean much. But remember, President Trump is 74 years old. So that's pretty advanced. Now, granted, he does a lot for 74 years old. He seems to be mentally sharp. Clearly from the debate, he doesn't take much crap. He is very fierce. He is a barking dog. He is, you know, he is Trump and he has a crazy schedule. He travels a lot. He flies. He, he speaks a lot. 
Um, so for a 74 year old, he's very active and very sharp. No, I'm not, I didn't say he was smart. I didn't say, <laughs> don't read into my words, but you have to admit the, the dude does a lot. Okay. So he's not going to be your typical 74 year old, but an average 740 year old, you have to remember tip number two, and I'm going to go through all these symptoms. Okay. I'm going to go through all these symptoms for you guys. Thank you for sharing, by the way, all you guys, you're doing an amazing job. Thank you. Um, in the L in the elderly, uh, fever is not reliable. Okay. I have it in my cap sock. So I want to put this up real quick in the elderly population. Fever is not reliable. Okay. On an average 74 year old, 80 year old person. Oh, grandma has a low grade fever. Grandma is, you know, um, not, don't worry. It's a low grade fever, dude. Basically that means that could be all they can mount. So when I heard that Trump has a low grade fever and he's 74 years old, I said, that's not good. That's not a good thing because fever is not reliable. Uh, our immune systems get weaker as we get older and all he could do, maybe all his body could do was mount a low grade fever. Okay. So I started to tell people my challenge. I was like, dude, like we, Oh, let me turn my better. Like, like this might not be good. A low grade fever might be all he can do. Does that make sense? So, so for us, mild symptoms, low grade fever is considered mild symptom, but in the elderly, it could be um, all they can do. It could be a very significant fever. So if you have a 90 year old, and so, and even in the further extreme, so let's take it to someone who's 85, 90 years old. Once they get to like 85, 90 years old, we throw out fever. We don't even consider fever. Your doctor, your, they, we don't even consider fever because at that point they might be zero. They might have a normal temperature. They might, in fact, Worst case scenario, this is even worse. I don't mean to alarm y'all, but this could be even worse. If grandma, grandpa, who's 80, 85 years old, if they are cold, if they are 96.5, 97 degrees, oh, they don't have a fever. It's 96, 97. Dude, that could be even worse. That means you're starting to get metabolic dysregulation. Sounds like a big word. Like He's just trying to scare you. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to tell you this is what we go to school for. This is what they teach us. We have to look out for the extremes. Premature babies. See, we all say premature babies. Of course, they're premature. They're going to go to the NICU. Of course they would. Of course you're going to watch out for them. Of course you're going to like like be hands off and keep in the hospital extra longer. Of course the preemie, preemie babies well, what the fuck do you think like a 98, 95, 100 year old person is? They are on the other extreme, guys. They're on the other extreme. Now, I know Trump's not 90. He's 74, but he is on the extreme side. Does that make sense? You start, have to, you start to have to think about it. So if you have a loved one who is in a nursing home or who's advanced age, disregard fever. If they have a fever, that's not good. But if they don't have a fever, it does not mean they're okay. Everyone got that? Does not mean that it's okay. So when I heard Trump has a low temperature, I said, ooh, there's probably more to this than we think. More to this than we think. Okay. Next number, number three, fatigue. Now, fatigue in the elderly. Okay, I want to make sure I say this right. But then I heard this, President Trump, oh, it's just mild symptoms. He has some fatigue. Listen, dude, when you're 74 years old and you're President Trump, and granted, remember we said this, he is much more active than the average 74-year-old. He has a lot of people around him, right? He is mentally engaged. 
you know, <laughs> don't make this political, man. Don't make this political. But you know what I'm saying? He is, he is out there doing his shit. So the second he gets tired, I had a red flag in my brain going, dude, that's not good. You know, he's feeling fatigue. And my point is they're trying to spin it like um, he, it's no big deal. It's mild symptoms. For the president of the United States to have mild symptoms that include low temperature, he's 74 years old, fatigue, he's used to going, going, he's in the middle of a campaign. Think about that. He went from campaigning, meetings, da, 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 high level, and now he's fatigued. That's a huge drop. Can I have an amen? Do you guys understand what I'm saying here? Do you follow me? It's a huge drop. You know, if, if, if grandpa who's 65 doesn't do much, but putter around, he wakes up, he putters, he, you know, he, uh, grandma makes him his meal and, you know, he takes his nap in the afternoon and 8 PM he's in bed. That like, I'm tired, you know, son, grand grandson, I'm tired. That's not that big of a drop, but for president Trump, who has been on the campaign trail, fundraising, speaking, da, 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 da. Now he says he's fatigued and the White House doctors are trying to pre pass it off as mild symptoms. No, 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 no. We have to be smarter than that, right? <coughs> Excuse me. We have to understand that that is for the president, for President Trump, that is a big change, of course. So fatigue for President Trump is a lot more than he's willing to admit. It's it's um, I get the sense that he's the type of guy who wants to go all the time, which means if he's willing to say he's tired of fatigue, that's a big change in his daily course. All right. Uh, I'm going to get to the comments. I'm going to get to the um, the news broadcast. His doctors came out a couple hours ago, gave an update at Walter Reed on president's condition. I will give you my take on that. Um, obviously they know more about what's going on than I am, than I do, but I'm trying to give you kind of my interpretation and like translate it so that then now it's applicable to your life. So if you're elderly, if you're elderly and you come down with coronavirus and you're feeling fatigued, do not hesitate to call the hospital. Do not hesitate to call a doctor. Do not hesitate to tell your loved one that you need to get checked out. Do you know? Do not sit on this virus. And in fact, the uh, the doctors will tell you that you can quickly turn from hey, they're talking and eating and doing great in the morning. I make afternoon rounds, and their breathing is tanking. We're going to talk about that in a second too. What 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 that's about with Trump. All right, so now, uh, number four, they, they admitted, and this one is the uh, most um, concerning, concerning one. They admitted that Trump has a cough, okay? Trump has a cough. The second, remember, coronavirus, respiratory virus, respiratory, you're breathing, you're right? Your breathing is not just your lungs, but your breathing as any singer will tell you, starts in your nasal passages, your oral airway, um, down your trach, your throat, right? In back of your, your face here, this is how you phonate, this is how you make the sound, this is how singers sing here, this is their head voice. Uh, you didn't think I knew about head voice, did, I? did you? This is their head voice, right? And then down here into their chest, right and into your lungs so your airway is all of this area it's not just your chest so the second that um we were told that trump has a cough then i know he has th this is much more progressive progressive disease right now you and i if you are compromised if you are high risk and you test positive for coronavirus and you start having respiratory symptoms. If you start having cough, if you start, especially if you start having shortness of breath, then you really, 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 really need to take that much more seriously. Okay. Do not be political about this guys. Do not make political comments on my, on this broadcast. I'm trying to apply what we know about the president's condition to help you. 
okay? So if you're older, if you're immunocompromised, if you are at high risk and you start coughing, that is like, woohoo, red flags. You gotta you got have alert up. You gotta have your finger ready to call 911, the family, the, you gotta get ready, right? Cause that's really a sign of, of bad progression. Okay, so, um, so Trump has a cough, right? And, and so that's why it was no surprise to me that they would take someone who's 74 years old, obese, he's not overweight, he's not chunky, he is in the obese category. Now he's not in the morbidly obese category. Morbidly obese means you have to have a BMI of 40 or more, um, which is about 100 pounds overweight. His weight is actually like 240-ish, and he's pretty tall, too, you know, like six six foot, six foot two. And so he's pretty tall. So, 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 but he's a good four, 40 pounds overweight. Okay. So, um, so when when they when they announced his his mild symptoms, I said, dude, those are, um, I was thinking about it and I said, if, if, if he's president, if I was his doctor, they're going to take him to the hospital. They're going to watch him much more closely as a precaution. So that's what they did. Right. So I'm no genius. I'm no predictor, but this is just things that you can really read into what the press release they're, they're telling. You. Now, what I want to do is talk about I want to talk about um, the uh, the if you missed it about two hours ago, his doctors came out and gave a briefing on his current condition, and here is what I uh, I want to I want to talk about. They um, they say he's doing fine. They say they tell us his oxygen oxygenation level, so a pulse oximeter is ninety six percent. I don't know why Dr. Connolly, the physician, uh, Trump's personal physician, kept dodging the question about has he ever been oxyg on oxygen? And he kind of hee hawed, hum. He's like, he's not on oxygen now. He's not on this. He's not on that. Blah, blah, blah. But he was like, has he, was he ever on oxygen? They wouldn't, he wouldn't give a straight answer. That to me is really bizarre. And they also, they said, did he have a, temp, a fever? If so, how high? He, was, he had a low grade fever. How high? I don't want to get into the specifics. Really? Um, but he doesn't have fever now. But it's weird because the vital signs, right? The vital signs are, um, you know, uh, your pulse rate, your oxygen saturation, blood pressure, and also your height and your weight, right? But those are your vital signs. So, you know, heart rate, oxygen saturation, things like that. So I thought it was peculiar that they wouldn't, he would say, you know, his heart rate's fine. His oxygen, he even told us oxygenation saturation is 96%, walking around, laughing, joking with the staff. Yet they wouldn't, he wouldn't say if he had ever been on oxygen and wouldn't say how high his fever was, which I think is bizarre. I'm not sure why you wouldn't disclose that. In fact, it would seem better like he, he was on oxygen he had a fever that was 100.5 or 101.0, whatever it was. The number doesn't really freaking matter. I don't really understand. He was on two liters of oxygen. Now he's on room air. Now um, now his, he's, he's not had a fever for 24 hours. That, to me, would send a more reassuring message, right, guys? Anyone agree with me? Like, Did anyone else think that it was weird that they wouldn't disclose um, his vital signs, but they said his heart rate was low. His oxygen, they gave us his oxy, uh, oxygenation saturations, 96%. So I thought that was odd. I was like, why are you trying to sidestep that very simple question? So sometimes it's more in what they're trying, and clearly he's the president of the United States. So they're trying to control the facts. They're trying to control the narrative. Um, and I also, uh, was watching the doctors in the background, the actual treating physicians. So um, he had two or three pulmonary critical care, infectious disease. Uh, there was an anesthesiologist. There were a couple of nurses there. And so I was trying to watch them to see if they were kind of squirming, <laughs> like they really wanted to like say it. Um, but I don't, I thought that was peculiar. Did anyone else find that peculiar? If, if he had a fever and now he doesn't have a fever, that's a good thing. Why wouldn't you tell us what his fever was and now it's better? 
Um, if he was on oxygen and now he's not on oxygen, why wouldn't you say that? Uh, or are you lying? Or I, I don't really understand. I don't want, I don't mean to make it political. I'm just commenting as a physician that I would think that that's kind of unusual, un, kind of unusual. Um, so a couple more things I will say real quick and, and, um, it, it, dude, it's not, listen, it's not HIPAA. First of all, the president of the United States, HIPAA does not apply to the president of the United States. He's considered a public figure. So it's not privacy. Everyone knows. And for those of you who are commenting that, that like it's privacy, it's HIPAA, it's whatever, you're an idiot because they already told you um, other vital signs that are no different than just saying the temperature or oxygen or whatever, you know, there's no difference. And he's a president, he's considered a public figure. Now they can choose to share or not share, but quite honestly, uh, the precedent was set a long time ago that the um, health information for, for presidents, that it's actually better to, to let the nation know what's happening with a president's health condition than it is to try to hide it. That's for other political scholars to debate. I'm just telling you, you know, what what um, what uh, what is odd. What is odd? Okay, so you can agree or not agree, and trust me, if you don't even know what HIPAA stands for, you shouldn't even be be in this conversation. All right, um, they're. I, I wouldn't say they're lying. I would say they are controlling the narrative. They are trying to control the narrative. Okay, so not pro-Trump, not pro-Biden, not political. I would do the same thing, all right? If Joe Biden was in the hospital, if he was president, if a Democrat was president, if Obama last term was in the a hospital, I would, I, would kinda, I would give you the same sort of information. I would be saying the same sort of thing. Why don't I say this, say this, right? All right. So I thought that was kind of uh, peculiar about that. Now, let me talk about the course course of the disease real quick. Um, we know if you take, take down the timeline of exposure, exposure was, you know, and you, you don't know exactly for sure. If I had to guess, I would say this. I'm gonna say, Exposure was five to seven days ago. You kind of roughly count back. So the debate was Tuesday, Tuesday, you know, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So that would be six days, right? Yeah, six days. Um, so you're in that five to seven day window. It could have been uh, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, we we're talking about his, um, assistant, um, who, who, whose name has been mentioned in public airways. I, I choose not to mention her name because, you know, um, I, I don't want to cast anything else on her, but, um, I'm sure she's feeling pretty awful as it is, but, uh, we don't know for sure if that's where he caught it from. I mean, she tested positive, but that doesn't mean that um, that he caught it from her. He could have caught it from someone else. Um, the exposure uh, is hard to nail down, but it's about five to seven days, which means by my estimations, he is really in the start of this process. The worst part of coronavirus is in the seven to 10 day window. All right, um, so he is coming to that window, seven to 10 day window. Now he is the president. They have been very aggressive with treating him. They have thrown at him everything that we know works. <laughs> I laugh because it's not hydroxychloroquine. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean, I, it's not political, but he is not getting hydroxychloroquine. So I'm sorry. So, <laughs> 
he, he they have they have said he's getting zinc he's getting iv vitamin d um i can't remember if he's getting vitamin c or not but he's getting dexamethasone he got his dose of remdesivir he's um you know he's got uh uh yesterday he got monoclonal antibodies right uh which is only in um it has only been tested in, in a few patients. Uh, we don't know if it really works. Seems to possibly help. Not completely sure. So what are what is this uh, monoclonal antibody treatment he's getting that people are talking about? It's uh, so they take they take blood from somebody who's recovered from um, from coronavirus. They isolate an antibody, which is I mean this is microscopic stuff right this is really advanced technology they identify it and then they multiply it so it's monoclonal it's the same uh of the uh, it's, it's duplicates of that same antibody they do that for several different antibodies so now it's polyclonal right and then they make a cocktail and then <laughs> not happy hour cocktail but they mix it together and then they inject it into the patient which in this case is president trump now, here's the key. Here's the key for those of people who are keeping score. They gave him the uh, treatments very early. So Trump, President Trump was uh, given um, extreme treatments, treatments early, okay? I wanna make this very clear, um, remdesivir, is going to be held for people who are in ICU, um, really critical. Early on, you know, uh, back in June, when, when July, when remdesivir was just starting to hit uh, on the scene, um, then uh, they they were really kind of like slowly rolling it out. Even now, they're not really going to hit your remdesivir the second you hit the uh, ICU. Uh, but for President Trump. And he's rightfully so. He's the president. You know, he's high risk. A lot is at stake here. So they gave him all of the extreme treatments early. Don't hate on the man. We were, you know, we, we got to keep the president of the United States alive. Depending, it doesn't matter your politics, your political views. Now, I, you know, there's some really ugly people on my fan page that I really um, don't care for who think I want to see President Trump die. Like, where the fuck do you get that shit? And like, what's wrong with, I'm a physician. I don't wanna see anybody die. It, you know, it's really ludicrous, these comments people make. Um, so they gave him all of the stuff that we have any sort of data on, okay? So I'll say them again, right? So zinc, uh, vitamin D, Vitamin D has been shown efficacy. Now I have to, I'll be completely transparent here. I have to look, get, look up zinc because when we were given zinc, it was with um, hydroxychloroquine. Uh, zinc is needed in addition to hydroxychloroquine uh, to uh, activate or to augment its, its mechanism of action of how it gets into the cells. So I don't, I might've missed it, about why you would give someone hydroxychloroquine. I mean, uh, why you would give someone zinc without hydroxychloroquine. I have to, I have to backtrack there. So that that's me being transparent. Two vitamin D, very good study showing it's um, that there was a definite difference between patients who had low uh, vitamin D level versus those who had adequate vitamin D levels, right? Uh, dexamethasone, which has been shown to be effective, that's just an IV steroid uh, that we give. And it's very common. Remdesivir, which you know before coronavirus, man, was in the back shelf, sitting chilling. They were trying to use it for multiple. It's an antiviral, but it really hadn't been found to be effective anywhere. Um, I will tell you that I, uh, from the last time I looked, that it was still just kind of borderline of effective. Um, not saying that people haven't recovered from it, etc., but. We don't have great studies on it. It seems helpful, uh, not completely sure. And then of course, President Trump gets the uh, monoclonal antibodies, the monoclonal antibodies, which um, obviously is very extreme, okay? So 
today his doctors come out and say he feels better. He feels better. He feels better, which is good, which is good. But by the course of things, the, the worst days are to come. So I, so the next few days will be tell tell. So the, um, I would say the worst days are days seven to 10, right? So we need to keep an eye on the, on the president. I will tell you that if, if he wasn't the president, it wasn't gonna look good. It wasn't looking good. And um, that's not doom and gloom. That's not trying to upset people. That's not being a fear monger. That is not trying to, um, what does it need to happen? you know, it's not trying to, to get a rise or a reaction from anybody. It's just saying if, if you're watching me and you're older, 74, if you're over 65, if you are overweight, obese, that's our president, then you're most likely not going to get the world's best health care with a team of physicians. You have to learn from this. You have to take this virus seriously. You are on the extreme end. You are like a preemie baby, premature babies. We put them in the NICU. We accept it. We think it's, a, it's okay. We care for them. But we forget the other extreme, 80s, 90-year-olds. We have to be very, very cautious. Um, and with that, I think that's all I wanted to say. Um, I will tell you they're, um, they appear to be very cautious with the president, rightfully so, but they're also very cautious about uh, what's happening, you know, very cautious with the release of information. Not that they have to be an open book, I, I'm really well aware that we have enemy states around the world um, and that, um, that, that, that we, we need to guard, guard our democracy very carefully. I, I, I understand that. So um, with that, bless you, bless everybody. Um, that's my update for Trump. Uh, let me, uh, let me pay. What do you guys want to hear about my COVID rapid test? I have COVID, COVID rapid test and I have my weight loss challenge. So if you go to weightlosschallenge.com below there, you get a daily Facebook live with me. You get daily email. Um, our challenge for October is no snacking. We only open it uh, once a month, um, but you can check that out. Uh, it's open now. It's open until tomorrow. So you can only sign up for the weight loss challenge tomorrow uh, through tomorrow. So check that out. I also put together these COVID home tests. You have to order them through me. So I don't have a website. It's just me. So send me a message if you're interested in these. Um, this is what I used all summer long to travel. Uh, this is, I promise you, listen, everybody, before you sign off, don't sign off yet. I've been telling people in my challenge all summer that this whole nasal swab thing is bullshit. This oral swab, how is it that the president, the politicians are getting daily testing with immediate results and us schmucks are sitting in line in our cars waiting for three, four, five hours, waiting five, 10, 14 days for, for results, having this cotton swab stuck up our nose. Do you think the president of the United States was getting a cotton swab stuck up his nose the whole time? Heck no. He was getting this, a rapid test. So the rapid test you guys are going to he start hearing about. Trust me, I've been right this whole time. We They've been doing these rapid tests on athletes and celebrities. This is a 10-minute test. I wish I had one that was open. Um, maybe tomorrow. Who Put a one in the comment section if you'd like me to demonstrate this tomorrow. It's time for me. I tested myself about two weeks ago. I test myself regularly. I test my family regularly. Anyone who comes in contact with me, I have one other family, one neighbor who helps me out because he uh, he has a seven-year-old daughter who plays with my four-year-old daughter. I test them regularly. Um, in August, I did a two-week camping trip and I and I tested all all um, all the people I came in contact with. So tell me tomorrow if you if you comment, put a one in the comment section if you'd like to see me demonstrate this rapid test tomorrow. So it's a finger prick. It's just as if like like a diabetic 
here it is right here. This kit, I put these kits together. You can't get this anywhere. Yes, they are 95% accurate. And here's the bullshit thing, Carrie. The nasal swabs, they don't tell you this, but the nasal swabs are at best 70% accurate. 70, 70, 70% 70 accurate. Um, but the, these rapid tests are 95% accurate. Um, and I'm making them available to people who message me. Uh, I have a limited supply. You will get kits like this. Um, I sell them for uh, $50 minimum, pay attention, minimum order of 40 tests, 40 tests. So yes, I understand that's $2,000, but hold on, hold on, pay attention. These resell easily for $100 to $125 each. So I'm offering you a wholesale price of $50. You can double your money. You can sell half of them and keep the other half. You can sell half of them and get all your money back and keep 20 for yourself to test your family. Or what I would do is I would sell all 40, double my money, right? Let's say you sell all 40 for a hundred bucks. That's $4,000. And then you say, hey, Dr. V, give me $4,000 worth, right? So um, that would be eight, 40, 80 tests. I would send you 80 tests. And you would sell them for a hundred. You make eight thousand dollars. You take some money off the table. Your original two thousand dollar investment. Take two thousand dollars off the table. Now you made all your money back and say, "Hey, give me six thousand dollars worth, right?" Um, so that's what I. And then I would just keep doing that over and over and over again. That's what I would do. But that's just me. I'm a little bit entrepreneurial. But I I made this available to you. I of course, of course, I could have created a website that. Hey, go buy these from me, go buy whatever. Right. But I don't, because I, I know that this is what's going to get us through this. It's more testing. It's not less testing. And you know, this is medicine. This is healthcare. You're not going to get this for cheap. Um, $50 has the kit. What's in it, Dr. V it's a little finger prick. So it comes with a lancet. Okay. Um, so this is this tells you some idiocy right there because this is not a pyramid scheme. This is wholesale. This is just like if you wanted to open a, a Nike store, a shoe store, you would buy Nike. You would order Nike's wholesale price for 50 bucks and you would sell it for 100 bucks, a pair of Nikes. That's how store owners work. This is how it works. If you own a clothing store, you buy you buy dresses for ten dollars and you sell them for thirty dollars. That's the same thing. So I'm offering these rapid kits. Um, I put these together myself, literally. I, I'm in my, my office right here where we put these together. Um, it has a pair of gloves. It has the lancet. You finger prick yourself. It has the buffer solution. It has an alcohol swab. It has a Band-Aid. It's everything you need. It's a rapid test kit. You can't get these anywhere else. So just message me if you're interested. They're $50 a test, minimum order of 40. So it's a $2,000 investment. Uh, plus shipping and handling and and you can do it i can order i can sell you cheaper versions right so uh, i mean smaller smaller quantities but but you're not getting the price break and what i want to do is get these out in the hands of a lot of people and that's how we get over this coronavirus guys we get over this coronavirus by by re by like frequent testing we don't get over this by bitching and moaning and complaining. You don't have to wait. That's exactly right. You don't go wait in line. This is a good point, Momo. This is a finger prick. Just like if you check for blood sugars, like a diabetes, diabetes test, you prick your finger and you put it on the test. You put the buffer solution and um, you get the results in 10 minutes. You read the results. You don't send it into a lab. You do at the privacy of your own home. This is not for traveling. You're not going to get a certificate. You don't have to report the results. It's like a pregnancy test. If you get pregnant, if you think you're pregnant, <laughs> you go get a pregnancy test and you take a pregnancy test. Now, this is a blood test. This is not a urine test. So don't be peeing on my test. This, <laughs> don't pee on my test, yo. This is a blood test and it checks for antibodies, both IgG and IgM. It shows if you're actively infected. It also shows that uh, if you've had it in the past and now you're clear and you have antibodies to it. 
Now don't go Googling it because if you if you go Google it, you're gonna see like, oh, that does that doesn't show active infection. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. All right. See, Ying Yang got hers 10 minutes and you're there. She got her results. She tested, right? So you just message me on my uh, on Facebook. Uh, find me on facebook.com slash Dr. Vong, Dr. Vong, and then you send me a message, uh, Sarah. That's the best way, best way to do it. Just message me on Facebook, all right? Um, so there you go. Uh, yes, so, there, so again, there are no FDA-approved COVID tests, zero FDA-approved COVID, COVID tests. Um, they, they're, they are only what's on the EUA, Emergency Use Act, right? They are on the Emergency Use Act. So um, these are on the EUA. So they're FDA on the EUA. Um, you take it at home. You do not send them into a lab. You read the results. I send you all that information on how to read the results. I send you um, the uh, picture, the instructions. So if you want to resell them, you would send the, those links to the people you sell them to also. Um, so Andrea Bottom, uh, she used them. Thank you, Sunset. Uh, man, you, you, you might not get a stimulus check. What is, there's nothing wrong with making money. Uh, that's yesterday, let me see. All right, so there, uh, the wholesale price is $50 minimum order 40. They resell easily for, um, there is no website. You have to message me to get them. You have to message me on Facebook. Find me on Facebook, send me a message. Um, it looks just like me. <laughs> okay, uh, Linnea. Um, yes, so this is specific to COVID, to, corona, to SARS-CoV-2. Um, so you're good there. Uh, good question. Uh, Linnea, so that's great. Um, I don't have, I mean, I could create a website. I, they are selling online for 200, 250. So if you get them for me from 50, for $50 each, and you sell them for $100 each, you're doubling your money, but you're also saving the other person. You're saving the other person 50 bucks, 100 bucks. You know, this is, this is a win, win, win. This is how we do it. So, um, uh, and honestly, I, I realize I'm Dr. V, I'm all cute and shit, but like, I seriously, I, I don't charge my neighbor because we play, you know, we hang out, we have dinner, we have barbecues, we babysit each other's kids. Um, if they need help, we watch their kids. If if we need, if we want to date, if Erica and I want to date a uh, night out, we, um, uh, you know, he'll watch our, our four-year-old. And, um, so I test his family, uh, regularly. Um, if you were, if you're a teacher and you're scared about going back to school, I would order a packet of 40 of these and, uh, test like, let's say and homeschool, like five or six kids and say, Hey, like I, I, I'll homeschool your kids. You just need to take, pay for a COVID rapid test. For, you know, $40 a day per kid, I'll homeschool them. And any parent who drops them off needs to take a COVID rapid test. That's what I would do. It's 95% accurate. There's nothing that's 100% accurate. They're, you're not going to find it. Now, here's what's up. This is fucked up for the 1800 of you. There are 1800 people. There were 2300 people on this live stream on all forms. I love that. But they've had these guys. They've had these all along, but what happened? Remember, they controlled the narrative. They decided that they were gonna do the nasal test because it's PCR, why? You have to send it to a lab to get PCR. Now, you guys think I'm fucked up, but this is, this is how the world works. So they do the, they, they, they force us to do the PCR, the nasal swab. They, um, then you send it to the lab, but it's free, Dr. Vong. It's not fucking free. These lab companies have to pay employees. They have to, they have to have buffer. They have to have, you know, um, reagents, right? So they're getting paid guys. How are they getting paid? It's your tax dollars. 
our government will, if they haven't already, it's I'm sure it's buried in the stimulus packet somewhere. They are getting reimbursed. These labs are getting paid. It's no cost to us out of pocket, but it is a cost to us because why? Because it's our tax dollars. Every time you pay taxes, this is what you're, you're paying for this. So, um, so then they, they, they created this demand that overwhelmed the system. Okay, watch this. Who remembers when this shit all first started? When this first started, they need. They had. Um, if you tested positive, they wanted you to do two que two weeks of quarantine. Then they required you to have not one, not one, but two fucking negative tests. Who remembers that? Put yes in the comment section if you remember that they used to require you to get two negative tests before they let you go back to work or let you out of quarantine. Well, then they quickly realized we don't have enough tests. We'll we'll overrun the labs. So then what happened? They dropped that requirement. They dropped who what happened to that requirement? Where did it go? Yes, yes, yes. See, you guys remember. Where is it now? No. See, they dropped that that requirement. That is just like totally like, no, no, like, yo, you just quarantine for two weeks and you're set. See? See? Everybody remembers. You had to have two negative tests before you go back to work. Not true. <clears throat> so But I had a friend who's a big business owner and he tested positive. Two weeks later, I sent him a test. He tested positive. And two weeks later, his wife tested negative, but he was still positive. Five fucking weeks later, he's been in a quarantine. He's been isolating. Five weeks later, he is still positive. And he goes, Doc, what am I supposed to do? I said, dude, technically you're still contagious. He goes, I'm just, I'm real tired. I have this low, low cough. I was like, see, you're contagious, man. He goes, what am I supposed to do? I said, well, according to CDC guidelines, you quarantine for the requisite two weeks. You can go back out in public without a test. How crazy is that? It's totally crazy. If you still have symptoms, you are still contagious, right? Unless you have a negative test. So um, I need to send him another test. <laughs> but but that's that's how we get over this coronavirus is that we have to get past this. We have to have more frequent testing, not less frequent testing. If you would like to get your hands on these COVID rapid tests, I would I would ask the entrepreneur in you. And you don't even have to be entrepreneurial, but you see the benefits of it, right? I'm, I'm offering them to you at $50 a kit. I put these kits together. It has everything you need. No one else is putting these together. Your doctors can order the tests, but in their office, they have all this. So they order the test from the company if they can find it, if they can get their hands on it, then they have to have all this other stuff in their office. So then you have to go to the doctors. You have to like, Prick your, that you prick your finger, all this sort of stuff. This is a home test. You, you take it home. Uh, you administer, you check your blood sugars. It's just like checking your blood sugars. It gives you results in 10 minutes, both IgG, IgM. It's antibody testing. Yes, it's effective for um, active infections. Oh, that's the other thing. If you decide the narrative, I'm getting back to the narrative. If you decide that the narrative needs to be this nasal swab, are you going to promote these or are you going to say, yeah, these are not effective? You're going to do they're not effective for active, but it's not true. There is a three to five day window where you get exposed. Um, you It could be negative. That's, that's the entire false negative scenario. You haven't built up enough uh, chemistry to detect either the, the virus or it's antigens or antibodies. Doesn't matter what test you have, there's a three to five day window. That's the same with this test. So if you test too soon, like let's say you go to a party tonight and two days later you find out somebody at the party tested positive and you say, I wanna test. It doesn't matter what test you take, chances are it will be negative until 
you um, are beyond the three day window, three to five day window, especially if you have symptoms. The second you start having symptoms, you can take this test. It will show it, it's very, it's 95% accurate. And the nasal ones are only 70% accurate. Now, let me ask you this question. Why is the nasal one only 70% accurate? The reason is because why? You could have missed it. You could have virus up in your nose, but if that Q-tip doesn't touch your mouth or throat, touch the right area, it'll, it will be negative. Uh, these are, I'm, um, I'm, I've put these together myself, you know, and these are for home testing. They're not for travel. They're not for return to work, just like a pregnancy test. If you took a pregnancy test and it was positive, what would you do? Of course, you would call your doctor's office. What would he do? What would she do? She would do a blood test. She would confirm it with a blood test. That's exactly what they'll do with this. Um, you do you do a little finger prick test in here. It's positive. You call your doctor. They say, come in. They'll check your antibodies. They say, yep, you have it. You got to go isolate for two weeks. And then you call them after two weeks. Hey, doc, uh, can I get out? Can I come out of my house now? They'll say, well, it's been two weeks. How do you feel? You go, I feel pretty good. I just feel a little tired, but no big deal. They'll say, I guess so. But they won't know. <clears throat> but if you have this, you can tech, check your check it again. There you go. And you can know for sure you're negative. So why would you use this? Why would you use this? anybody who wants to get have a gathering who wants to travel? So Erica's mom is visiting from Albuquerque. She comes off the plane. I test her. Dark. You said there's a three day window. I know. But I know that I test her. She gets off the plane. She's negative. You're good. Does she develop symptoms within the next three to five days? She's been here three weeks now. Nope, she's been totally asymptomatic. I'm good to go. Does that make sense? I will probably send her home with a test kit. She can test herself when get, she gets home or three to four, three days after she gets home. If she really wants to be right, I mean, she can quarantine after travel. You're supposed to quarantine for 14 days. Why would you fucking quarantine for 14 days? You understand if you have this, and if you really want to be legit and you want to travel, wherever you get, quarantine for three days, check your check your result at home. If it's negative, you're good to go. You're 95% sure you don't have coronavirus. Um, this would be good for anyone who hasn't seen their grandbabies. Since all this started, have you not held your grandbaby since March? I didn't hug my daughter, who's 14, lives with her mom, <coughs> from March until June. July, from March until July, when I got a hold of these. I tested her, she was negative. I tested me, um, I was negative. Our first hug, I did on camera, I did on a video. I said, I cannot believe it. This is the game changer. This is what we need. This is the fucking bullshit that they are keeping from us, right? Now listen, I believe, you've seen my coronavirus videos. I wear a mask, in fact, Tomorrow, I probably should tell you what to do for the fall because I'm about, I'm wearing mask and I'm about to order a face shield. Now, y'all think I'm crazy, but it's about to get batshit crazy up in in the fall here, right? So I'm actually not only wearing a mask, but I'm going to start wearing a face shield. I highly recommend that you do that too because you're going to have a lot of people coughing, but you got to combine it with testing. So the holidays are coming. You want people for Thanksgiving? You want, just like I said, I have neighbor my, my neighbor Tom, you know, we help each other out. He comes over. I go over to his place. I test our entire families and our kids play together. Um, you know, uh, he watches my house when I'm gone. They come over to the pool. I have this is my pool. Here, see, That's my pool out there. See the pool slide. They come over. They swim, you know, so you can live a life. That's maybe the biggest lie is that you have to like isolate, stay in fear. No, you don't. You need to know your result. You need to know your status. So I would say, what is my status? What is your status, right? You got to know your status. So if you're interested in these, um, message me on Facebook at uh, Dr. Vong, the support surgeon, Dr. Vong. That's the best way to get a hold of me. I'm not on Amazon. I know this is crazy. I, I'm, I'm on um the uh, YouTube channel, but I don't really mess comment much. I don't understand how it would be negative after active if you're uh, testing. 
it goes from IgM to IgG. So your IgM is your first wave, and then um, that will go away and turn to IgG. So IgG shows past infection. It totally is. Yeah, and face shields are cheap. Cheap, man. So, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, winter is coming. I need to make that meme. I keep saying that. It's, that's going to be my meme. All right. Face shields are cheap. Totally right. You're right. Um, yeah, we. do you know of anyone getting a positive result? Yep. My, my friend who's the business owner had a positive result. And my next door neighbor's wife had it. And uh, I tested her. And it showed she had IgG antibodies, which means she had the infection. She got over it. So, yes, these work. We've tested the company. I get my friend's company gets these. And um, between um, his company has they've tested over 10,000 people and they correlate really, really well. And the um, the uh, studies on this shows a 95 percent accuracy, 95 percent accuracy. So uh, if you want these, um, check them out. Message me on Facebook. There's no website. There's nothing you can do. You just have to message me. And uh, $50 each, minimum order of 40. Resell them yourself at between 100 to 125 bucks. Do not take less than 100 bucks for them because they are selling online for 200, 250. Um, you're going to start seeing rapid test sites pop up and they're going to be sticking you for 125 bucks. Get them from me for 100 bucks and you'll have the entire kit. You have to do it at home as opposed to being around with sick people. Cool. And tomorrow, because you guys asked, tomorrow, because you guys asked, I, uh, I will, I'll take my own, I'll take my test tomorrow online. I'll show you how it works. Okay. When I get my next, um, Trump update. All right. If you found this video helpful, <laughs> minus the last 15 minutes, I appreciate you guys hanging out and talking with me. Um, Oh, here you go. I, I saw a good question. I, I want to take one question. How is checking your temperature daily any different? It, it, dude, Jackie, don't take this the wrong way, but this is a total scam. The temperature thing is a total scam. Temperature does not tell you if you have coronavirus. It is not very specific. It doesn't mean you could go running in the heat and, and have an elevated temperature. It's really, 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 really not useful. Temperature thing is not useful. Find me on Facebook. Let me, um, you know what I'm going to do? Let me, let me, before I go, let me show you how to find me on Facebook. It's going to be the, the best, the best way. Hold a second. Here we go. Um, message me on Dr. Vong. Here we go. Here we go. Good. Cool. I, I apologize. I know I'm probably losing some of y'all here, but I want to, let me, let me show you how to get these tests real quick. So you spell out the word doctor and then it's my last name. Okay. If you want the COVID rapid test message, Dr. Vong message, facebook.com slash Dr. Vong. It's $50 a test minimum order of 40. That's $2,000 plus $60 shipping. So it's 2060. They resell easily for a hundred to 125 bucks and you're saving people money and you're going to um, see uh, testing sites pop up, rapid test testing sites pop up. Trust me on this. And they're going to be charging you 150 bucks. You're going to have to wait in line. You're going to have to sit around other six pe sick people, or you can get it from me and, um, and do it at home. Okay. Tomorrow I'll, I'll take a test tomorrow for you guys. Hopefully it will be negative. I have a sore throat, a scratchy throat. <coughs> thank you guys. Um, thank you guys for watching. This is how we get beyond this. For the naysayers, I could have easily made a website, sold these for 125 bucks myself, but instead I'm passing it on to you guys because I know that if we can disseminate this, these test kits, these home test kits out, that's how we get over this. That's how we get to the next phase. That's how we get back to hugging grandbabies and seeing our grandmothers and our loved ones and our and our high-risk elderlies and everything. This is how we go back to normal, guys. 
is that we start controlling the narrative. We start doing what's necessary. So if you're interested in these rapid tests, go to facebook.com slash Dr. Vong. And um, uh, they expire by April, 2022. So you're good. April, 2022, 2022. All right. So I'll see you tomorrow. Talk to you later. Bye.